till what? One thirty when tax meets or whatever. So we'll we'll probably go. No, we won't go that long. I. It's actually one o'clock. One. Okay. So, yeah, we're gonna have to cut this we'll, short. We'll have to. We'll have to go quickly. Well, thank you for joining us, and we don't have a ton uh, to uh, facilitate, but I, I want to go through, um, I guess, some housekeeping. We do have a 2607, which we all know is the pesticide bill, and I want to hold off on that one. Um, we're waiting for some last-minute uh, language um, that the chairman and I will look at to see if that's, if we want to add to it, they're still working on it. So if you're agreeable to that, we will probably have a quick conference tomorrow and, and do that. So just so you're aware, <clears throat> and uh, I don't know exactly what that language is. That's why we're, we're waiting. So, okay. So what, what we have, what we would like to discuss is, um, the Senate substitute for 2047, which we know as the uh, Farm Animal and Field Crop and Research Facilities Protection Act. And any questions on that? We do have a we do have a kind of a conceptual technical amendment. If you have that bill in front of you, it would be on page two. <clears throat> Line, what? 2047. On page two, line, well, it's, it's, it starts with line uh, 18. After the word aircraft, we will insert, as that term is defined in 14 CFR 1.1, as in effect on July 1st of 2024. This was brought forward by one of our, and then um, what don't you have? No, you don't have that. This is a conceptual amendment, so you don't know. And so, what this this was brought by one of our members, just as a technical clarification, that 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 goes uh, somebody that's very familiar with avionics, and so if you would accept that. Reviser Hamilton on page, uh, well, Vice Chair Mosier. Um, Mike, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, do we have to insert that same language in page three? Because that, that same paragraph is on page three as well. On starting on uh, line 17. Uh, yes, Representative, I think so. Thank you. That's the only other place, correct? That's the only place I'm sorry. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You accept that? Yes. Go so ahead. the Karen. you gave us the right. number. What is that for our information as far as the are we talking in, unmanned aircraft here? Is that what the definition is in fourteen CFR one point one? I believe that is correct, yes. Any aircraft, man or unmanned, so is a broad, the broad interpretation or, or, or definition that was not in there before. All right. Well, I was going to call her vice chair, but she's sitting in for the vice chair, Senator McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just, where is the, it says, as term is defined, and where is that definition? Okay. 
this one. Okay, yeah. Okay. And then I have another. Yeah, multi definition. <laughs> I think they're working on it. Mr. Chairman, we would like to have the exact language rather than as defined, so we'll look at the 14. Sure, understand. Uh, CFR 1.1. Kyle, do we, have, do, do we have that? Or Walters, do we have that? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, I looked up that uh, regulation, and it states in subsection D, helicopters powered parachutes and weight shift control aircraft if the operation is conducted without hazard to persons or property on the surface. Oh, um, and then it it has some subparagraphs uh, concerning those those issues, but those that looks like the only thing concerning a definition that I see in that regulation. Senator McGinn has a question to ask. You, Mr. Chair, I guess what I'm trying to understand: more and more farmers are using drones to look at their property after flooding and that type of thing, and I'm trying to find out if I need to take my drone three miles to my other farm, is that in the CFR, how high my, so I sure don't want to frighten, you know, uh, cattle or anything else. So I would go higher to get to that, but I, I just need to know where, where, where am I going to get shot down? <laughs> so to speak. Um, so, in that same regulation, uh, it's an altitude of, you have to be an altitude of 500 feet uh, above above the surface uh, to any person, vessel, vehicle, or structure. Mr. Chairman, is that the right definition or the right uh, reference? It, it didn't seem to provide me with what I would have expected in the definition. Go ahead, help us here, because this this is a late addition, so I'm not exactly sure. I, I was relying on on a a colleague that is a is, is some of an expert, so that's why I want to make sure. So, if we can have a better definition, I know they're looking. So yes, I agree. Go ahead. So what I, what I am seeing in the CFR is aircraft means a device that is used or intended to be used for flight in the air. Okay. It looks like 14 CFR 1.1. Is that what we're looking at? Okay. I don't have any immediate heartburn with that definition, but I would like to look at it to make certain if to read the whole definition before we actually give you uh, an ag total agreement. I don't see a problem, but okay. we'll, we'll just delay making certain. I did make notes, so we'll have an opportunity to look at that, Mr. Chairman. Why don't we go ahead and I'll kind of make a proposal for the whole where we want to go and then we can pause, you can discuss and we can discuss to make sure we're comfortable with that as well. And, uh, and then what we want to do moving forward, if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. Certainly. Okay. Now what we would like to do is, uh, add, um, the contents of house bill 2543, which is known as the brands fee, uh, bill. And with that, you should have a amendment. If not, Heather will pass that amendment out. 
we have some language we would like to change after yes it's been passed by both but upon further review i think a discussion What this does, this goes back to the House language. I think some changes were made. And then what this does is just explain that so that hopefully no confusion on the application fee, registration, and renewal fees. Uh, they cannot exceed $100 individually. I think there was some confusion before. I want to make sure that was spelled out. So to me, individually, is, is, is kind of the key to help explain that. I understand. And that was the intent of the committee on the Senate side, was to make sure. certain that they were individually. Okay, thank you, Mr. Agree to that. Okay. And also, we would like to add the contents of House Bill 2608, which is uh, kind of known as the poultry bill. Uh, I, did it pass? Did you, it didn't pass out of the Senate, correct? Basically what this is, 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 is the Department of Agriculture uh, has been getting the vaccine from USDA and then kind of absorbing the cost or taking it from other funds. Uh, the industry has agreed to uh, um, help now pay for that. And so, that's this is just some clarifying uh, language in this bill. So that is that is one. Correct. So basically, it is it's a Poultry Disease Control Act, and this is creating a participation fee that hasn't been there in the past. Yes. So it's an annual participation fee of more than no more than fifty dollars, and um, again, uh, this is just for pylorum typhoid, and and so and there's also a max of a hundred dollars per. Uh, foreign participant uh, each year. So any questions on that? When the department testified before the Senate, they suggested a balloon, which we did not work the bill. So we didn't get that far. Uh, have you seen that from the department, that balloon? Um, I think we were aware, but we don't have one, correct? Yeah. So I think I think what they were looking at was some language that was put in on the House floor that stayed in the bill. I think for now we're going to see how it, it deals with rules and regulation. Oh, this is it? Yes, sir. Well, there we go. Let's 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 look, shall we? Chair loves to be surprised. I know. Tamara, would you care to explain? I think I think I understand. We just want to make sure that we have a. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you are correct. When the bill passed the House, there had been an amendment on the House floor. And when it got to the Senate, uh, the department did express some concerns that that would limit their ability to uh, set a fee that is lower 
than the limits. So they just wanted to make sure that they had the authority in rules and regs to set that fee um, at a lesser rate. Okay. So $50. Yeah. The cap would be $50. Mr. Chairman, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm okay with it. Doesn't think it matters to me. But we, we can also discuss that as the group went. So we'll kind of leave that there if that's all right on the whole. Absolutely. Okay. I, I would think it'd be good for all and, of us to get the opportunity yes. to digest. Exactly. And, and and the last thing we would like to add is House Bill 2800. And I don't believe you had a hearing on that one. That is dealing with um, conservation or funding for our conservation districts and uh, the money has already been appropriated. And so what this is currently, if county commissions, the money they give allocate to the, the uh, conservation districts is a one on one, one to one, this should bump it up to a two to one with a maximum of 50,000 right now. The maximum I believe is 25,000. The idea of this that came from a farmer, the legislator that says, you know, we have a hard time keeping, you know, if you want to call them the district managers, some still call them secretaries, administrators, whatever, that because of you know, many of them are located within the same office complex, DOC service center, where Farm Service Agency employees have all the benefits of the federal government. And this one is you kind of out there on your own, typically with limited benefits and so this was uh, this was something that that we worked through the process and already and we think it would we'd like to add that to it it is no additional uh, appropriation that that money has already been appropriated mr chairman do you know what the dollar amount is of the appropriation this would increase the dollar amount somewhat on the appropriations is there a fiscal note i guess would be the way it looks to like um where is it yeah, roughly um, two and a half million from the uh, state water plan. As part of the state water plan, is the conservation dollars in it? An average of twenty three thousand eight hundred thirty five dollars per district. If you know, and it depends on if, if we don't know if all one hundred five counties will participate or or exactly what, but that's. That's where that is. So accounting may not necessarily increase their appropriation, but whatever they are appropriating, we would. Right. It is two it, for one this year's, up to the max. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the correct number is three point five oh two million dollars is in the, is in the budget then for this. So um, so not every county will. We don't know what they're going to do. That's up to the county. But but each of them, in a sense, will hit a, will probably will hit a cap. At least the state, the state's participation would. Most most they could do is be fifty thousand. That's that's what we have. Senator McGinn has a question. Well, I have two now. Um, the two point five million is that uh, money that uh, didn't get spent, and um, or is that money because of the um, bill we passed last year to increase um, funding for conservation districts slash through the water authority. I believe that was part of the state water plan we passed last year. Okay. And then my second question is, what is the origin of these individuals that work at the counties for the division of conservation districts? Are they county employees or are they state employees? They are employees of the district itself. They are they are they are um, uh, the the local conservation district. Those board members are elected by by um, people that participate in the program. Those that choose to vote, and that board is the one that elects um, or, or 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 hires that manager director, whatever they, whatever they just define it as. So, no, they, 
there is no benefit package unless the unless that board themselves decides to do it. We we do know there are some counties that do provide health insurance. I there may be one or two that maybe provide a small retirement fund, but primarily uh, because of limited funds, it is uh, it is just whatever within the within the budget of that conservation district and part of that budgeted process goes to that manager. So no, they are not a part of the state or a county employee. So when they were created, they created a taxing district to take care of themselves to pay for that employee? I Well, I believe that was part of it. And, okay, and I can look this up later, but I just, it's back to this whole ratio between what the county's responsibility is and what the state's responsibility is. And I know in this budget, this budget has continued to grow year after year for at least six to eight years now. And I just didn't want to get out of proportion. Sorry, I'm getting on a soapbox. I apologize. But out of proportion as to what the counties are supposed to uh, provide. But I'll look that up. Right. And, and, and again, Senator, um, the, the, the state's portion goes up with the county's portion. So if the county chooses to do more, the state's portion would increase. And so I believe, boy, I'm, I think they were started a little bit before I came around, but, but I believe that was, uh, the, the idea was each county would have that and it would go not only to programming, but also then to have somebody that would facilitate that, that would be uh, not, not an employee, say, of the Natural Resources Conservation Service, the old soil conservation, you know, back in the day and, and so on. So, so yes. Another question I here, offer, and I don't, I don't have any additional questions either. One of you got additional questions. Okay, there's no additional questions at this time, but we will look at the proposal using Senate Substitute for House Bill 2047 as the shell or the bill, and we'll have conversations among ourselves regarding adding 2543. 2608 and 2800. 2543 and 2608 have a proposed amendment that's been suggested. And so that's all we would have. And then we'll look at 2607 at another time. What is your schedule the rest of the day as far as potentially getting back together today to see if we can wrap up the first bill? Do you know? We go back on the floor at two o'clock. So do we. Um, I would think that we would be, I don't think we'll probably be very long. We could probably go again right after the uh, adjournment of the second house. As far as, as far as I'm concerned, that'd be fine. If that's what you want to do. It's, I would think it shouldn't take very long. So I, I agree. So that, that would work for us if we go with the, uh, at adjournment of the second chamber, and then we will meet, and we have this room. Is that correct, Mr. I Chairman? I hope so. I, d I know there's... Because you're, you're over there at tax, right? So at 112. Right. So we'll let you know as soon as we know. We hope, we hope it is, but I know they've got them stacked up. I mean, there's only 13 rooms available, I guess, and so, okay. but that'd be fine. So just watch the email watch the deal but yeah as soon, as soon as we get dana we'll get somebody lined up and then we'll we'll have that all right okay i'm good thank you mr chairman appreciate all right. it we'll be back uh somewhere hopefully here after the adjourn of to the uh, uh second house uh, recesses uh, after two o'clock with that we are in recess for now